hi guys so we are back with another video that is like so this is how it's going to be uh like we were conducting a paper class right um we have completed around nine papers and actually there was a small gap uh, i mean like you know, with the works and like, i couldn't post the discussion of the paper 10 uh, what i decided was like okay uh, as a help for the a-level students uh, let us make this paper class completely free of charge uh, so that anyone could uh, get the benefit out of it right so uh, because of that so anyone who is willing to join the paper class for free of charge completely this would be like we would continue this class in this manner uh, completely un uh, until the uh, exams of uh, 22 right so if anyone uh, wishes to join uh, so you could uh, just send me a text privately and then I would add you to the group. So in that case, of course, like we would provide you guys um, uh, Google Forms so that uh, you can mark your answers and get them auto marked and check your progress, right? So that benefit would be given to you. Uh, so the discussions are usually going to be posted on the uh, channel, right? So every week, most of the time, right? So most of the time, weekly, we will be discussing a paper right um that would that that would be how it uh, how, how it's going to go uh yeah so within a month we'll try our very best to complete four papers right so four papers per month which means at the uh, end of uh, well, like when it's close by to your exams you might have completed a lot of papers and then of course um if you if you check the standard of the papers of course it would be uh you know it, it's going to be pretty standard right so like because um, the questions are kind of extracted from very old um, kind of papers, past papers, model papers, right? So school papers, um, not very recent ones because, like, usually the recent past paper questions, are, of course, like you just you guys have to do, right? So that of course you have to do alone. Uh, this and also like most of the questions we would exactly change the uh, numbers, uh, the answer solutions, and all somewhat, and somewhat we would re-edit right so so therefore this is 100 percent going to be very very standard right so not just papers that are uh, made uh, for the sake of uh, conducting paper classes right so like these are very standard papers so make sure to uh, take your time before you go through the discussion right so make sure to take your time and then answer the papers mark the answers in the in a google the, the, the google form that i provide and then get your uh, they check your progress weekly and then go through the discussion right so like uh, you just have to go through the discussion one by one each which uh, you got the answers incorrect right the incorrect answers you will have to uh, check why you got it incorrect and also the correct answers if possible if you have time uh, what you have to do is you will have to um, check whether there is uh, like whether, whether the method that i teach is much easier than the method that you have taken right so you have to be humble enough to uh, do that all right so yes, let's. I guess it's pretty clear. So simply, this would be a, a completely free of charge paper class uh, that would be uh, ongoing until uh, the exams of twenty two, right? So step by step, we are going to include more questions. Like uh, for the time being, we have decided to include questions from unit one, unit two, unit three, and uh, unit four until heat. Right until heat, we would be including questions. And if you see, uh, usually we are going to include structured essays as well, right? Structured essays, and then also uh, some essay problems, two essay problems, two structured usually, right? So this would be the uh, pattern of the question paper. So yes, let's get started with I guess, right? So yeah, all right, guys. Okay, guys, uh, let us move on to the uh, discussion of the paper, right? Uh, so in the first question what they're asking is uh, kilowatt hour is unit of let's say this is a very frequent question kilowatt hour is a unit of usually the first question that you would get mostly is going to be some some kind of this kind of a problem uh, something related, related with the units um, units and dimensions right so what do we uh, what is units like what is the uh, what is kilowatt hour simply kilowatt hour we feel like this is a unit of power right? we feel like right obviously because of this kilowatts actually it's not a unit of power you know so kilowatts means actually it's uh, joules uh, joules per second right like simply watts watts is forget about the kilo 10 to the power 3 right joules per second hour is once again uh, 
once again um, so we can think about this in this way right so uh, kilowatts it's power kilowatts is power hour is time so power into time is what simply you can remember there is an equation power is equal to energy divided by time taken so energy is equal to what power into time taken so power into time taken can be written as what energy so kilowatt kilowatt hour is uh, a unit of energy right so that will be the answer uh, it will be a unit of energy all right so let's move on to the next right so let us go for the second one it says uh, once the necessary materials are provided which of the following thermometers which of the following thermometers uh, are easiest is easiest to construct right so it's not like usually when you see this question do not uh, get the mis uh, misconception that uh, this is not regarding what is easy to handle right so here what they are asking is which is quite easy to um, construct right so they have given thermocouple gas thermometer okay gas thermometer and glass in thermometer obviously if you if you think about this right so like which is easiest to construct actually uh, the answer is going to be the thermocouple because to construct a thermocouple you just have you just only need uh, two wires right two wires maybe copper and ferrous right and then you, you just have to like uh, join it together right uh, and then immerse one joint inside a liquid which is in a uh, theta one temperature and the other into another temperature obviously there will be a uh, emf right so like this emf is going to be the thermometric property all right so this is pretty easy to uh, design actually you just need only two wires right you just only need two wires and uh, two different mediums two different mediums with different temperatures right so in that case you are going to get a proper thermometric property but uh, actually when you use this uh, when you construct this gas thermometer and all it's not quite uh, easy right it's not quite easy and then also uh, glass in thermometer uh, it's also not easy uh, to calibrate these things are not easy to calibrate and uh, to construct right so the the easiest is uh, the thermocouple right so the answer would be the first one all right okay right so let us go for the third problem right so it says the molecular weights of two ideal gases right a and b uh in a mixture are m1 and m2 what are m1 and m2 m1 and m2 are the molecular weights the molar mass of a and b gases what they need is the root mean square speed of gas a and root mean square speed of gas b right so simply we know the equation for uh, root mean square speed of a gas is simply c is equal to c squared bar is equal to 3rt over m we remember this equation so if you need to get the root mean square speed we need to include a root to both the sides right so here um, like what they are saying is uh, that there are two different gases there are two different gases m1 and uh, a and b with molar masses different molar masses right so here how how is the root mean square speed related with the molar mass it is an inverse proportionality right so gas a if you need to find the root mean square speed of gas a it is one, uh, one over m1 so if you need to find the root mean square speed of gas b c squared b inverse proportionality sorry uh, m2 root so this was this there should be a root as well right so if you take the uh, simplified answer it should be m2 over m1 right so the answer should be m2 over m1 which is the third answer these are pretty easy usually when you try a paper of course 
the first few questions are definitely going to be somewhat easier right so like uh, try to do them quickly and move on and try to save some time from the first few questions and try to give it to the uh, final final means like the latter part of the paper usually right so that is how you need to try the papers uh, right let us move on to the next one right so let's go for the fourth question guys right so let's go for the fourth question uh, this is a simple uh, linear momentum question right so you just have to apply the conservation of linear momentum i guess right so we'll see a rail car of mass 5m right there is a rail car of mass 5m uh, which is at rest this is initially at rest right and then uh, they're saying an engine of mass 3m moving at 8 meter per second collides and couples this is very important right so this engine is going to move with the speed of 8 meters per second and it's going to collide with the rail car and it's going to couple uh, the speed of the engine after impact is the speed of the engine after impact is right um right fine it's like this let's try to plot it plot a diagram for it right so it's going to be in this way usually uh, they're saying there is a uh, rail car um, what they're saying is there is a rail car of mass 5m right which is initially which is initially at rest right so this uh, what do they say uh, an engine engine of mass 3m is moving towards the rail car with what speed 8 meters per second and after collision both couples both becomes one object right that's what they're saying so if both becomes one object uh, what will be the total mass of the object 5m plus 3m is 8m so what is the common velocity that they move after the collision so actually this is the initial system right initial system just before collision this is the final system right final system after collision right so simply uh, since no external forces are involved we can apply conservation of linear momentum right so when we apply conservation of linear momentum one thing is like we need to decide the direction i will uh, choose this direction to apply conservation of linear momentum right so uh, initially 3m into 8 right 3m into 8 plus what's the mass of this guy 5m into its velocity is 0 right 5m into its velocity is 0 uh, after the final system like simply conservation of linear momentum means the linear momentum of the initial system is equal to the linear momentum of the final system right so what is the linear momentum of the final system 8m into v right 8m into v which means uh, 3m into 8 is 24 uh, m and this is 8m v so this to this cancels v is going to be 3 meters per second it's quite straightforward right so the answer is going to be 3 meters per second right so the fifth one <coughs> it says a thin plate of irregular shape yeah, okay this is an irregular shape suspended freely by a cord from point a okay initially it is suspended from point a all right okay this is point a uh as so on next the plate is suspended from the point b okay next it's suspended from point b uh the center of gravity of the plate is most uh, most likely to found to be found at so when it is uh, when it is uh, hung at point a what is the vertical line the vertical line is this so we have already studied how to find the center of gravity when it is a uh, uh, when it is an irregular shape right so we'll have to hang it from one end and then we'll have to record the uh, vertical line right the vertical line all right and then when when so this is the vertical line right a a dash when we initially hung it and then when we hung hung this 
hang this for the second time it's this is the vertical line so we know that we have already studied that so the point where it cuts the uh, the point where these two vertical lines cuts each other uh, is the center of gravity is, is where the center of gravity is going to lie if it is hung from this point point c the vertical line is going to go in this way right if it's that is how it is right so the answer would be s the answer would be s right okay so okay guys uh, let us uh, let us go for the sixth question here what it says is like uh, simply uh, they are asking uh, which of the following is not a measurement uh, is not a measurement uh, obtained using one of the laboratory measuring instruments uh, as the measuring instruments they have given the meter ruler traveling microscope vernier calipers uh, micrometer screw gauge and the spirometer so i think uh, in order to answer this problem you need to have a idea of uh, the ranges of these uh, uh, instruments meter rule of course you can measure uh, from 0 to uh, 100 uh, centimeters right so traveling microscope it's a short range right so traveling microscope uh, vernier calipers um, are going to be somewhat uh, a smaller range around between 0 to uh, 12.5 centimeter this is not exact right i'm saying i'm just saying the uh, overall right so the, the general uh the micrometer screw gauge is uh, around 2.5 centimeters or something right spirometer is also kind of uh, a very small value right so now uh 3.015 this is sorry uh now this three point uh three point one zero five uh and uh, 0.07 0.07 are uh, these are measurable these are measurable how because this spirometer the spirometer uh, micrometer screw gauges uh, have very low uh, least counts their least counts are something around like they can take 0.001 uh, range centimeter right this amount of least count range can be taken by the spirometer and the uh, micrometer screw gauge so therefore like uh, the fifth answer and the third answer are quite possible then these are quite possible I, although i said it as like it's around 2.5 like uh, maybe you can measure this 3.015 using a spirometer right so that depends uh yeah so other than that now uh, uh, when you are going for a, a greater value like vernier caliper of course you can measure even there are vernier calipers uh, which have least counts of uh, 0 0.001 uh, centimeters such vernier calipers are there right so since the range of a vernier caliper is around 12.5 uh, centimeters so this is also uh, possible this is also you know possible this is also possible now we, we have two answers right so we have two answers which we have to decide uh, the uh, solution from right now if you see uh, 45.73 and 72.1 so definitely you need to get these two measurements using what using a uh, meter ruler you do not have any other option you need to go for a meter ruler definitely right definitely love to go for a meter ruler right so if you go for a meter ruler is the meter ruler going to have uh, 0 0.01 centimeters uh, of a least count no right the least count of a meter ruler is one millimeters one millimeter right which means 0 0.1 centimeters 0 0.1 centimeters right uh yeah so simply therefore like this is possible you can measure 72.1 centimeters right but 45.73 45.7 you can measure from a meter ruler but 73 this cannot be this this cannot be measured this cannot be measured right so therefore the answer should be the 45.73 that is what you can't find from a uh, measuring instrument right so in this question you need to understand uh, the ranges of the uh, ranges of the measurement of these measuring instruments if you do not have an idea you'll have to <coughs> find out the exact range of the meter ruler traveling microscope vernier caliper microscope meter screw gauge and the spirometer and there and how much of a least count they can go up to 
meter ruler the maximum least count that they that it could go up to is 0. Uh, 0. 0.1 as i remember it's 0.1 centimeters which means one millimeter so it, it, it can't go for 0. 0.01 therefore this kind of a measurement cannot be made 45.73 from a meter ruler 45.7 is possible 73 is not possible right okay let us go for the next problem so the seventh problem is uh, a quite easy question if you see this is a question from thermal physics so it says <clears throat> having a large bulb so a large bulb at the end of the stem of a mercury in glass thermometer right mercury in glass thermometer so uh, see let's see what is the purpose actually of having a large bulb in a mercury in glass thermometer right so if you see uh, like we know the sensitivity let's go for this right so the sensitivity the sensitivity of the you know when you study the sensitivity of a glass thermometer you know the sensitivity depends on is directly proportional to the uh, initial it, it's, it's directly proportional to the initial volume of the glass the uh, initial volume of the glass bulb right you why is this because like uh, when the initial volume of the glass tube is high when the initial volume of the glass tube is high the uh, volume expansion volume expansion how do we write the volume expansion v naught gamma delta theta so when the initial volume is high for a small amount of heat if you supply a small amount of heat the increase in volume is high you know that the change in the volume or is the volume expansion of a liquid delta v is equal to v naught plus gamma delta theta so what is v naught v naught is the initial uh, initial volume initial volume of the uh, liquid which is inside this like initially the liquid is here right inside the uh, glass bulb so when the initial volume of the liquid is somewhat higher when you give a small heat right for a small temperature change the change in the uh, volume is somewhat higher for a small temperature change if the change in the temp if for a small temperature change if the change in the uh, change in the thermometric property is high then sensitivity is high right and also while we are here sensitivity also is inversely proportional to the uh, radi uh, the the radius of the radius of the stem so if we can make the radius much smaller then the sensitivity will be somewhat higher right so this is an inverse proportionality right so remember this okay let us go for the uh, 10th question all right so therefore the answer uh, would be uh, simply uh, it increases it increase it will increase its sensitivity right the answer is it will increase the sensitivity right and this increases sensitivity increases right okay so next let us go for the uh, eighth question right so let us go for the uh, eighth question in the eighth question it says a block of ice right a block of ice of constant thickness right so the thickness is constant floats on a sea water with one centimeter appearing above the water level right it has a constant thickness and it floats on sea water such that one centimeter is above the water level if the density of uh, the ice it should be it should be not e by e s right so it should be i c e right ice and sea water they have given the density of ice and sea water they are they are asking us to find the total thickness of uh, of the ice block now this is a question uh, like where you will have to do some calculations right so you can't uh, get the solution argumentally i guess right so you'll have to go for a calculation mm, and also this is if you see 
is going to be a hydrostatic question right so let us we'll have to go for a simple uh, calculation i guess right so let us draw a diagram first initially right so this is the eighth question right so let us draw a diagram initially there is a block right ice block floating on water right they're saying one centimeter is one centimeter is above the uh, sea water uh, and it has a constant thickness which means the area is constant right area is constant you know it's a 3d block right the the area is constant you know this is going to look something like this right so this is what i consider consider as the area and this is the height right so let us assume the total height of this uh, block is uh h it seems let's assume the total height of this block is h right so let us mark all the possible forces here so if it floats according to the principle of flotation the weight is equal to the up thrust isn't it the weight is equal to the up thrust if that is the case uh, since it floats we can write according to equilibrium right mg is equal to u what is mg the mass of the ice block so how do we write the mass of the ice block the total volume of the ice block we know uh, into its uh, uh, the uh, the density of the ice v rho ig and then how do we write the up thrust up thrust is the dipped volume we need to have the dipped volume so let us assume the dipped volume is v dash v dash so v dash rho what is rho the density of <coughs> sea water into g g to g cancels out and g to g cancels out so what is v not v not is the total volume total volume how can you find total volume i have taken the total height as simple h simple h into uh, the cross sectional area is going to be <coughs> the total volume h rho i is given uh, rho i is given what is v dash v dash is the dipped volume from the total volume we need to subtract so dipped volume how do we find the dipped volume from the total volume from the total volume you need to subtract this part from the total volume you need to subtract this volume how do you find this volume that is a into 1 cm because the cross sectional area is a and uh, this is 1 cm right so a into 1 uh, a, a minus h a into 1 uh, right let's assume the height everything is given in centimeters right okay fine uh, rho uh, s rho s right okay now if you see in all these cases a to a to a cancels so h rho i h minus 1 rho s <coughs> right now uh, let us uh, go for a simplification right let us go for a simplification h rho i h rho s minus rho s what is h it is unknown rho i rho i is the density of ice density of ice is 920 density of ice is 920 h 130 density of salt water is sea water is 130 130 right so let us take this to this side 130 and uh, 130 h minus 920 h is what what is this going to be uh 920 that's 80 80 plus 30 is 80 plus uh, 30 is going to be 110 110 h right 130 this to this cancels h is equal to 103 over 11 centimeters if you simplify this you're going to get an answer right so exactly uh, the answer is going to be 9.36 right 9.36 uh, but uh, actually there is a small issue 9.36 uh, centimeters the issue is the answer is not uh, there in the 
uh, given answers, right? The actual answer should be 9.36 centimeters. So you can consider this question as uh, all, right? Because uh, actually the answer is not there. It's actually, this should be 9.36, 9.3. Uh, but it's given to be as 10.3, but uh, the answer should be 9.3, right? Okay, hope you understood the steps. So therefore it's fine, I guess. So let's move on to the next one. So yeah, the ninth question. All right, so let us discuss the ninth question, right? So in the ninth question, they're saying if the number of nodes, are uh, okay, the number of nodes, right? Number of nodes produced in a stretched string, uh, okay, produced in a stretched string, connected to two fixed point is in uh, if the number of nodes are in then the length of the wire what they're asking is the length of the wire length of the wire in terms of the wavelength lambda in terms of the wavelength lambda right okay so let us uh, simply try to analyze this now uh, let's assume this is a string this is a string right so one let us assume this kind of nodes, right? Let's assume, sorry, this kind of loops, right? Ah, what are the nodes here? This is one node, another node, 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 and once again, node. How many nodes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For nine nodes, how many loops are there? One, two, three four five six seven eight eight loops are there therefore if you see if you have n nodes you are going to have n minus one loops for n nodes you're going to have n minus one loops one loop is how long in terms of lambda lambda over two one loop is lambda over two how many loops do you have n minus one loops so l the length the total length is how many loops do you have n minus one loops one loop is lambda over two uh long so therefore l can be equal to n minus one lambda over two n minus one lambda over two this is pretty simple right so i guess this is the answer right let us move on to the next problem right so let us see the 10th question right so in the 10th question uh, it's just the statements i guess you can uh, come to the answer with simple arguments right so like these kind of problems are very frequently seen in your uh, in your uh, exam paper right so past papers if you see a lot of abc problems are there you need to be quite familiar with how to deal with these kind of problems right so right fine so the saying consider the following statements made about the motion of a particle now right okay motion of a particle the first thing is a velocity of a particle cannot be reversed okay velocity of a particle cannot be reversed without changing the direction of its acceleration without changing the direction of its acceleration is this true velocity of a particle cannot be reversed without changing the direction of its acceleration. Shall I give you a hint? What if you, uh, this is the 10th one, right? So let's assume there is a uh, object which is moving under a deceleration. Like now the initially it has a, uh, let's assume a very high velocity. So we are applying an acceleration in this direction, which means like a deceleration, right? So now it's decelerating its velocity, step by step, decelerates and comes to uh, zero. Its velocity comes to zero. If we constantly keep on applying this acceleration in this direction, next what will happen? Next, the object will start to move in the other direction. Right? Here, did we change the acceleration's direction? No. Acceleration was always acting in this direction. Now also, its accelerating is acting in that direction. So, very simple example is if you consider a motion under gravity, right? Acceleration is always g right so initially the object goes up and the object turns its direction and comes down like in order to in order to change the direction of the velocity initially it's going up right initially it's going up and then finally it's coming down in, like in order to change its velocity in order to change its velocity uh, the direction of the velocity do you need to change the acceleration direction no it's always the same it's always downwards acting downwards right 
so that statement is not going to be correct right so that statement is incorrect and then they're saying when a particle is projected vertically downwards with a large velocity when a particle is projected downwards with a large velocity uh, right vertically downwards large initial velocity its acceleration will exceed it's not exceed right exceed the acceleration due to gravity no it doesn't matter whatever the uh, speed whatever the initial speed that you apply uh, to an object always it is going to go under gravitational acceleration it doesn't matter what velocity that you are going to apply to this object when you project it down always it's going to move under the gravitational acceleration so that statement is also going to be wrong when the acceleration of the particle is zero it must necessarily be at rest that's completely wrong so when the acceleration is zero it can perform a uniform velocity motion right it can perform a uniform velocity motion in that case it doesn't have to necessarily be rest at rest so i guess the fifth one would be should be the answer right actually the fifth is the answer right okay so we just need to uh see because the third the twelfth one right now so let us see it says three identical uh, lights uh, spring balances right so three identical uh, light spring balances are connected to form an equilateral triangle it is uh, connected to form an equilateral triangle right this is an equilateral triangle if the arrangement is subjected to through uh, two three equal coplanar forces so if the arrangement is uh, subjected to three uh, coplanar uh, equal coplanar forces uh, then the then when the system is at equilibrium we need to find the reading of the uh, spring balances when the system is arranged in this kind of a manner right so three uh, wires is subjected to three equal coplanar forces in this way and to these wires if uh, spring balances are connected so uh, what would be the readings of the spring balances that's what they are asking so let us see so here actually they have uh, supplied 10 newton forces to all these directions 10 right 10 and then this is an equilateral triangle right equilateral triangle equilateral triangle so the internal angle is 60 this should be 30 this would be 30 each right this would be 30 each right now uh so let us mark the tensions on these strings this is one string t1 mm. t1 t1 this would be another string this would be t2 t2 this would be another string here it would be t3 t3 so if we somehow found this t1 t2 and t3 that would be the readings of the spring balances you know why so if you connect a spring balance in this way a mass to a spring balance in this way so the spring balance directly reads what exactly it reads the tension which is acting directly below it the reading will be the tension which act directly below the spring balance we know that right so if t is mg so the reading would be mg right so so simply if we if we can find t2 t3 and t1 separately that would be the uh, readings right so this is the wrong method right so you might have a pretty easy method you can follow if you if you are quite familiar with them right so you know uh, so this is simply the long method right so for each of these points let's assume this is the point a this is point b this is point c for each of these points i'm going to consider the equilibrium and i'm going to apply equilibrium equations right so i'm going to consider equilibrium at point a right so 10 newtons is equal to uh, what t1 cos 30 t3 cos 30 if you consider e apply equilibrium in this direction 10 is equal to t1 cos 30 plus 
T three cos thirty. T three cos thirty. This is once again I'm saying long method, right? Uh, when we apply equilibrium for point B, point B similarly, if we apply equilibrium for point B, ten is equal to uh, ten is equal to T three cos thirty. T two cos thirty. T three cos thirty. T two cos thirty. So this is the second equation. Third equation, if you apply equilibrium to point C, T one cos thirty, T two cos thirty, right? So all these are applied in this direction. Uh, so no different different directions, right? So ten hmm. is equal to what is it? T one cos thirty, T two cos thirty. T one cos thirty plus T two cos thirty, right? So next, what I'm going to do is um, T one and T three is there. T one and T two is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract um, the second equation from the first equation. I'm going to subtract the second equation from the first equation, right? If I subtract the second equation. Right. If I subtract the second equation from the third equation, what I'm going to get? Going to get ten minus ten. Uh, this two actually, this two this cancels out. So t three cos thirty minus t one cos thirty. This is the fourth equation, right? So uh, fourth equation. Actually, it's like this, right? So you have three equations, three unknown forces, right? T1, T2, T3. Three equations, three unknown forces. If you simplify them, you're going to get T1 equals T2 equals T3, 10 over root 3 Newton. I think I do not have to work out the simplification, right? So you can figure it out, right? So you have to simply do a uh, simultaneous simplification solving, right? So you have three equations, you have three forces, you're going to get T1 equal T2 equal T3. All these three forces are going to be 10 over root 3 Newton. So in that case, each of the spring will show, will show what? 10 root 3 Newton forces, right? 10 root 3, new, uh, 10 over root 3 Newton force, right? Right, so let us go for the 13th question. Uh, it says a ball is thrown straight up from the edge of the roof of a building, right? Mm. It was thrown straight up from the edge of the roof of a building, mm -hmm. which is 20 meters above the ground. Ah, okay, it's 20 meters above the ground. Uh, so it is thrown straight up, right? So because this is important, why? So there's plenty of ways to throw a ball. You can project it in a projectile motion. So, so therefore, like to avoid this kind of misconceptions, they have exactly mentioned a ball is thrown straight up. Upon coming down, the ball just measures the edge of the roof and reaches the ground. If the entire journey takes four seconds, the initial velocity which the ball was thrown up. This is a quite easy question, right? So it's very easy question based on motion under gravity. Motion under gravity question right yes let us try this this is a motion under gravity question right okay so there is a ball mm -hmm. they have they have projected it straight up so it goes up and one when it returns back it just misses the edge of the roof and it reaches the ground it reaches the ground right they have told uh, it takes t equal four seconds to complete the entire journey and also they have given the height is 20 meters the height is 20 meters this height is 20 meters so let us assume this is point a this is point b what can we apply we can apply from a to b from A to B motion, we are going to apply in the downward direction is equal ut plus half 
at square is equal to ut plus half at square. What is the downward motion? The downward displacement it is 20. The downward displacement is 20. What is the initial upward velocity? Let's assume it is u. In this case, we need to substitute it as minus u. Why? Because I'm applying the equation downwards, right? So let us, uh, what is the time? The time it took four seconds for the complete motion from A to B. Uh, uh, when it is coming down, it's going to come down with gravitation acceleration. So therefore the acceleration is 10. Time is four squared. So 20 minus four U uh, plus five into 16. If you simplify this, uh, I think you are going to get something uh right so you're going to get something around uh, so here it's uh, 20 right 20 uh minus 4u plus 80 so minus sorry plus 4u is equal to 60 u is going to be something around 15 meters per second right so the answer would be mm, something around 15 meters per second right uh let us move on to the next question right so the 14th question uh, is going to be based on the thermal physics gases part right so they're saying if the avogadro number is in okay avogadro number is in gas constant is r the number of what they need is the number of gas molecules right not the gas moles what they need is the number of gas molecules in a cubic meter of uh, okay in a cubic meter in a cubic meter of an ideal gas at stp we need to i think draw a diagram so in that case and uh, if it's easy for us to analyze it so it is standard temperature pressure right stp means standard temperature pressure standard pressure is what 1.01 .01. It's 1.01 into 10 to the power uh, 5 pascals, right? What is the standard temperature? Standard temperature is 298 Kelvin, right? And then they're saying the volume is 1 cubic meters. 1 cubic meters, right? We need to find what? The number of molecules. The number of mo gas molecules in this. So we have an equation. What is it? PV is equal to NRT, isn't it? We have an equation PV is equal to NRT. How do we relate capital N here? So we know the number of moles into Avogadro constant can be written as the number of molecules, right? The number of moles into Avogadro constant can be written as number of molecules. So the number of moles can be written further as capital N over L. So therefore this PV equals NRT equation we can further modify as how PV is equal to instead of N we can write capital N over L R T right PV is equal to capital N over L R T what they need is capital N so capital N is P V L over R so P is given 1.01 .01 into 10 to the power 5. What's the volume? 1, 1 cubic meters. L is L. R, R, 2, 98. So is there, uh, uh, sorry, they have taken here the standard uh, uh, temperature as 273, guys, right? Actually, the standard temperature is uh, 298 but uh, i don't know so they have taken it as uh, in this case as 273 right so therefore let us go with it all right so but remember uh, the standard temperature is 298 that is 25 degrees celsius right so oh no sorry 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 uh, i have missed it right actually uh, the room temperature is 25 degrees celsius i guess right so yes you can uh, like consider the the standard temperature as 273 kelvin it's fine it's fine right so yeah sorry about that uh, mis misconception right so let us correct it 
273. So in that case, n is going to be 1.01 .01 into 10 to the power 5 L over 273 R, right? So is there such an answer? Uh, so what they are asking is n, right? Ah, okay. Uh, 1 into 10 to the power 5. Uh, oh, Avogadro's constant is n. Sorry, sorry. Avogadro's constant is considered as n, right? So therefore, we'll have to rewrite it as uh, n. Right. Okay. It should be n. Avogadro constant is n. I'll, I'll assume this as n uh, dash, the, the, the number of gas molecules as n dash, right? n dash. So instead of L, you substitute in here right in so is there such an answer uh yes right so there is uh no ah, okay there is such an answer i ah, know okay so guys uh, there's a small printing mistake uh in the question right so sorry about that uh the answer in the in the in the in the like you need to correct this as here it's not r is not here right so r should be somewhere here so you need to correct that right so sorry about that as well right so the answer is this right so according to uh, this uh, answer so this should be the answer right so the r is actually mentioned on the top actually it should be mentioned on the below r right okay so i guess it makes sense right so let's move on all right so let us move okay the thing is like guys the 15th question uh we are going to skip the 15th question that is because like uh we have not yet uh, completed surface tension part uh in our classes right so therefore like uh, we're not going to we're not going to uh discuss this part right so let's ignore for this ignore this question for the for, for the time being right so yeah so actually i did not see this part when i included this question so therefore let's ignore the 15th question for the time being right and then let's skip for the uh 16th question right so it says in the 16th one pressure versus one over v graph uh, is given uh, at constant temperature uh, is given at constant temperature of two ideal gases x and y uh, which are contained in two separate vessels as shown in the figure right consider the following statements right so p and 1 over v so uh, let us in let us try to uh, figure it out here itself so p v is equal to what in r t we can further write p v is equal to mass over molar mass r t so P M R T over capital M into one over V. I took this V, I took this uh, V below, right? So this is what Y equal M X. This Y equal M X, right? So the gradient is what now? This complete part, right? So the gradient is what here? Uh, the gradient m is the mass r over molar mass so you can see you can clearly see that the gradient of x is greater than the gradient of y gradient of x is greater than the gradient of y right m x is greater than m y this is clear so uh, the possible reasons let us see the number of moles of gas x is greater than gas y the number of moles in gas x is greater than gas y yeah it's possible right the number of moles means this m over capital m right the number of moles of gas x when the number of moles of gas x is greater its gradient is going to be greater so it's, it's correct right actually the gradient of uh, x is greater than gradient of y so therefore it's correct curve of x can be coincide with the curve of y this curve right x curve can be bought such that it's going to uh, coincide with y 
by removing a certain amount of gas x uh, if we remove a certain amount of gas x right what happens if we remove a certain amount of gas x if you remove a certain amount of gas x what happens is ultimately if you remove a certain amount of gas x its gradient is going to decrease its gradient is going to decrease if its gradient decreases it may fall on this line right we can make it coincide with y if we can decrease the gradient of x we can make it to coincide with y so therefore it's possible it is possible uh, the final the molecular weight of the gas x must be larger than that of y uh, molecular weight so let us check the molecular weight uh, the gradient is mass r over capital m so we know that um, the gradient of x is greater than gradient of y mx is greater than m y so this grade the gradient of x is greater gradient of x is greater therefore the molar mass of x should be lesser right molar mass of x should be lesser than the molar mass of y molar mass of x it's not going to be larger it should be less than so therefore it's wrong so the correct answer is a and b right so let's discuss the 17th question <clears throat> So it says uh, the velocity time okay vt curve of the particle of mass simple m moving on a straight line is shown in the figure consider the following statements uh, the first statement okay they have given a vt graph right based on the vt graph uh, they have given us they have given us uh, simply few statements right right uh, so yeah <clears throat> so let us check the statement one first uh, it says the particle returns to its initial position at the end of the motion so how do we decide it whether it returns back to its initial position let's assume it started somewhere here right uh, at a certain point uh, like in a vt graph the area under the curve gives you the displacement right so if you check Initially, it has a positive displacement. It has a positive displacement, a certain amount of positive displacement, right? And then once again, uh, there is a negative displacement. Or, sorry, the, the area under the curve is once again going to be negative. When it once again becomes negative, it's quite, you can see, both these areas are uh, equal. So therefore, if the area is becoming negative, it means the displacement is becoming negative right so it's returning back it's moving forward means its displacement increases positive displacement positive area it's returning back means its displacement decreases its displacement decreases uh, area uh, is going to be negative so therefore that statement is correct it returns back to its initial position and then then they are saying uh, under the uh, B part, the acceleration of the particle does not change directions. Uh, does not change directions. Let's see whether it's true, right? So uh, actually, what is in a VT graph? How is the acceleration going to be given as? Right. Initially, if we check the area, it has a positive, and this is positive. So tan theta is what? Like area is the gradient. Gradient is tan theta. Tan theta is positive over positive. So therefore, the area acceleration is positive. If you see this, the acceleration of this part, acceleration of this part, uh, it has a the, the, when you get the tan theta or else the gradient, it's negative. This is negative, and this is also negative. Why? Why do I say it's negative? This part. Because you need to subtract from a lesser value, you need to subtract a higher value. From a lesser value, when you subtract a higher value, you're going to get negative value. So therefore, negative over negative, once again, the acceleration is positive, right? So therefore, always the acceleration is in uh, positive, which means it's in the same direction, right? Ah, okay, it's in the same direction. Right, that's also correct. Uh, at equal, the next they're saying, at equal 
t naught at equal t naught the impulse acting on the particle is infinite the impulse acting on the particle is infinite is the impulse acting on the particle infinite what do you think what do you think at t equal t naught somewhere here somewhere here what is the impulse impulse is sorry uh, impulse is change in momentum impulse is change in momentum mv minus m u so what is the final momentum m uh m so yeah m uh, minus v naught minus m what is the initial velocity at uh, just before m v naught right so it's becoming you know 2m v naught it's not infinite right so the impulse is not going to be infinite so at this moment if you need to check the uh, in, uh, impulse you need to check uh, mv so the velocity the final velocity is this the initial velocity just before is this right here and here right so if you if you if you get the difference you're going to get a finite value right so do not worry about the directions and all somehow you're going to get a finite value not you're not going to get infinite or you're not going to get uh, zero or something right so therefore this is incorrect right that is incorrect so therefore the answer is going to be only a and b are true right okay so let us move on to the next one right so let us discuss the 18th question in the 18th question guys uh, it says a force capital f varying with time right so f varying with time uh, is applied to a wagon of uh, mass this much 10000 kilograms which was initially at rest on a frictionless horizontal rail after 100 seconds the speed of the wagon at this moment uh, we need to find the speed of the wagon right so uh, it's like this initially at zero seconds a force of 1000 newton is applied right so let us try to draw a figure right at uh, t equal zero a force of uh, 1000 newtons is applied and at initially it was at rest so this was applied for how long this was applied for uh, t equals 50 seconds right at this time let's assume the ve velocity is v right uh, at 50 the velocity is v we can easily find this velocity how how from uh, f is equal to mv minus mu over t we can find it right so f into t is equal to mv minus mu so force into t so force into time right the force is this right force is 1000 time is 50 seconds right so 1000 into 50 uh, mass is 10000 v this is zero why initially the velocity was zero right so therefore this two this cancels the velocity becomes 5 meters per second so at this moment uh, the velocity is 5 meters per second uh, and then what happens after the 50th second after the 50th second the direction of the velocity changes right the direction of the velocity changes it's going to be negative 500 which means the force is applied in the opposite directions for how long for another 50 seconds uh, the force is applied once again for how long for another 50 seconds right so for another 50 seconds now the force is applied uh, what is the force uh, 500 newtons is applied for another 50 seconds at this moment the velocity was 5 right so right uh, now for how long did this move in this way it moved for uh, this was uh, t equal 50 seconds uh, for another 50 seconds 100 seconds and until t equal 100 we need to find the velocity at this point we need to find the velocity at this point right so once again we are going to apply f into t mv minus mu over t right okay uh, fine now uh, let us apply uh, f let us apply the equation in this direction right let us apply the equation in that direction so in that case minus 
500 into time is 50 mass is mv dash uh, mv dash minus mv right mv dash minus mv so this is uh, how much to 25000 25000 m is 10000 right v dash is what v dash is uh, v dash is is what we need to find minus 5 right this two this cancels all right so uh, yeah minus 20 oh, this, this is 10000 right so in that case this is going to be minus 2.5 right so v minus 5 this 5 goes to that side v dash is going to be 5 minus 2.5 v dash is 2.5 meters per second right so at this moment the velocity due to the force applying in the opposite direction from v equal 5 meters per second the velocity decreased to 2.5 meters per second so the answer would be the first one right the first answer right right so let us discuss the 19th one so here it says uh, two rods a and b of equal dimensions right so the dimensions are going to be equal the lengths right the lengths and the area all these things are going to be equal are joined together to form a single rod okay they are joined together to form a single rod which is then rigidly fixed at the center okay it's rigidly fixed at the center mm. the densities of the materials a and b are equal right so the densities of a and b are equal mm. but young's modulus of a is four times the young's modulus of b young's modulus of a is four times the young's modulus of b when the rod is dropped uh, at one end two different frequencies fa and fb are heard from a and b respectively the ratio of fa and fb so let us mark the required things on the diagram right so uh, that will be the easiest way i guess right so yes uh, the 19 problem right right so uh, it's like this something like this right so from here it's uh, fixed right so they're saying the densities of this is rho a this is rho b let's assume this is uh, la and this is lb right so they're saying rho a is equal to rho b the densities are equal la is equal to lb the, the dimensions are equal if the young's modulus of uh, a is ya and this is yb then they are saying the young's modulus of ya uh, is four times the young's modulus of yb isn't it that's what they're saying right so four times that of b right so how do we write the uh, uh, frequency of uh, of of one rod frequency in a rod how do we write the uh, fundamental frequency in a rod fundamental frequency in a rod can be written as f naught is equal to 1 over 2l root y over rho right y root y over rho is the velocity right the velocity right so uh, velocity in solids are y over rho velocity of waves in a solid is root y over rho right so therefore frequency is 1 over 2l root y over rho right the, the, the fundamental frequency right because you know inside a rod also uh, this is how a fundamental frequency is going to take place this is lambda over 2 right lambda over 2 is l lambda is 2l right so v equal f lambda so f is equal to v over lambda v is root y over rho uh, lambda is 2l right so this is how i got the fundamental uh, frequency so f a over f b uh, f a over f b right f a 1 over 2 l a root y a over rho a uh, 1 over 2 l b y b over rho b right so i just wrote the upside down this the fb is in the below so therefore i took the reciprocal right so these things are pretty simple calculations these two this cancels la to lb cancels y they are equal uh rho a to rho b cancels because they are equal fa to fb in that case is uh what so root 
y a over y b right root y, y a is one y a is y a over y b is four four right so f a over f b is two is two one right so the answer is going to be two is two one right so the answer is going to be two is two one right so let's discuss the final question guys right so uh, it says hot air balloon uh, contain uh, con hot air balloon of constant volume right so constant volume is initially at 100 degrees celsius when the temperature of the air inside the balloon is raised by 2 degrees celsius the fraction of air which escapes uh, escapes uh, is equal to they have asked us to assume that the gas inside the balloon behaves as ideal and the pressure inside the balloon is constant right okay so this is not a very difficult question if you see guys right so let us initially consider okay this is the balloon when it was initially 100 degrees celsius uh, when 100 degrees means 7373 uh, pressure is p volume is v mm. next what happens and then the number of moles was n1 let's assume uh, when when the temperature is increased by 2 degrees celsius now the current temperature is 275 kelvin right so what is the new number of moles n2 some amount of moles might have left so the remaining is n2 let's assume uh, volume is v pressure is pre because pressure is always constant right so for the first instance let us write pv equals nrt pv equals nrt and let us subject in n1 is equal to pv r what is the temperature 370 373 uh, this is the first equation so once again for the for the second instance after we increase the temperature uh, some amount of mass is going to uh, go out right so and then the remaining uh, remaining number of moles of uh, gas would be n2 so for that of course once again we will write pv is equal to nrt right so n2 here is going to be what p pressure is p velocity uh, volume is v it's not going to change right our temperature is going to change 375 uh, this is 2 so what do they ask now they are asking us to find uh, the change the they are asking us to find the fraction of the air which escapes uh, delta n to n1 right delta n how do you write uh, n1 minus n2 over n1 right uh, n1 is pv uh, r 373 this is n2 is pv r 375 uh, n1 is pv r 373 pv to pv to pv to r to r to r cancels so what remains is uh, what uh, 375 minus 373 if you simplify 375 into 373 divide by 373 this to this cancels so 2 over 375 this would be the answer so the second one would be the answer so guys uh, we have completely discussed uh, all the questions of uh, question uh, paper 10 right so we have yet to uh, discuss the uh the essay the essay, essay questions essay questions and the structured uh, questions right so we will be discussing that as well i will uh, separately post the discussions of the essay uh, and the structured uh make sure to go through go through that as well right and check your progress right so yes um if you are viewing this for the first time you, you like and then if you are interested in joining to our uh paper class that, that is done for free right so like you can you can uh, just drop a text uh, to the whatsapp number uh, mentioned in the description and uh, you can get the uh, get the maximum benefit out of it right so like we are, we are going to uh, we are going to supply uh, google forms and all this stuff uh, for you to get your get your answers auto checked and all right so like there's uh, plenty of uh, opportunities so as soon as a paper is uh, made it will be posted in the group so you will have you'll be given time to uh, write it and then thereafter only we will be going to we are going to post the discussions right so if you need to get the benefit out of it so this is completely free of charge right so like uh, it's, it's done as a help right so therefore you, you can you can uh, contact us and join the 
classes and get the maximum benefit uh, out of it right so okay guys hope you uh, got something out of the, uh, the 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 paper discussion right so let's meet with paper 11 then right thank you and see you guys